Hi, this is Matthew. I've got glasses on today because uh, I need them uh, to see the time on my computer. And uh, in Australia, it's 6.36 p.m. And I've currently been up for uh, two days and two nights and uh, and four hours. Uh, so... I'm having a good time. Uh, the longer I stay up, the more happier I get. And um, so, yeah, that's one thing about me. Uh, I've got the gift, the supernatural gift of bipolar. And um, a lot of people uh, to stay up this amount of time uh, need to take speed, mm -hmm. the drug. And uh, the longer I stay up, the more like a natural drug like speed, the same effect happens. And uh, so I can stay up for so long, I find it hard to get to sleep. I'm so high. Um, so that's like I'm on drugs at the moment. And when I'm on this natural adrenaline speed of bipolar, um, I tend to be verbose. I, God speaks for a longer time. And uh, you'll find uh, that... Uh, this will be a really interesting thing because I mean, the great thing. So you can ask the question to Lou and we'll get started, but uh, I've already started to answer the question. So, well, Matthew, I think you skip one question. So the question is number 22. Do people not seek you out or is it a matter of not knowing how? We've already done that. No, we did. Why did you find it so hard to find God and have him speak to us yesterday? Yeah, we did 20 yesterday, isn't it? Or am I confused? They're the same question. Okay, let's keep it then. Okay, so the question for today is, why do you enjoy having a voice and speaking through Matthew? Yeah, so how this works is the questions asked and then God speaks and answers the question. Then after God speaks to Lou, gives commentary. And uh, after a commentary, she may ask one or two more questions. God answers the question. There's a bit of back and forth conversation and then we end. And uh, so this is God speaking and Matthew forgot the introduction uh, to... to uh, to this um this is uh a video in the fifth book of god's last day's message to his children and um and this is also being converted uh into a book called conversations with god uh book volume one to volume three uh is uh getting produced in the next couple of days so um but keep on uh following uh this playlist and uh God's going to keep on speaking. Uh, so um, so Tulu said the question, do you enjoy having a voice and speaking through Matthew? Um, can I say that uh, having a voice in Matthew uh, was, was a process. It, it uh, took him uh, 57 years mm. of pain uh, to get to this point. Um. Uh, Matthew went to a, um, a pastor's conference. He got invited by someone in a ministry that got a whole lot of pastors together. And uh, the person found Matthew's prophetic website and says, well, he's a prophet. I'll invite him. And it was really mm -hmm. interesting because, you know, some good teaching. It was a prayer breakfast and they had prayer. And um, Matthew felt like amazing uh being in the company of pastors who had a full-time job teaching people and matthew was really unknown he's still unknown but mm. he, he walked up to this pastor and talked to him and said i've got a prophecy for you and shared the prophecy with the pastor and um and uh the pastor said can i share a message from Jesus with you. And 
Matthew put up his hand. He says, I, I don't share prophecies uh, with people for them to give me a prophecy back. It's, I'm quite okay. I don't I need you to give me a prophecy. And and um, the pastor said, in a way, that seems like humility, but it's actually pride. Um, you um, You find it quite okay to bless other people, but when Jesus wants to use me to bless you, you're suddenly nervous. Mm. It's my gift too, the gift of prophecy. Jesus has given me a message for you. I think it's important that you listen. So won't you let me say it? And Matthew said, sure. Uh, Matthew's had low self-esteem and doesn't allow people giving him things and finds it mm. really hard to receive. So this pastor said, um, I sense that you've, you've been through tremendous pain in your life. Mm. And uh, the pain is so hard. It, it's been so excruciating that you find it hard to even explain it to people. Mm. Uh, people don't understand or not really interested. Or you find it hard to express the level of pain that you've been through, people just don't understand. Matthew's eyes were filling with tears. That mm -hmm. was a really good word of knowledge. And uh, he, he said, you, you don't really complain to God. You're, you're a person who just accepts things and you've got a friendship with God, but you don't really complain. But you've had this question for years and years that you never ask God, but it is a question in your heart and God reads the heart. Why me? Mm -hmm. And um, Matthew was really crying now and he says, uh, Jesus wants to tell you now why mm -hmm. you and why all the pain. And uh, he says, do you know how um, there's a, a block of wood and you wind it up in a vice and you get it secure so you can saw the block of wood. And Matthew shook his hand. He said, um, your whole life has been that vice mm -hmm. getting you into a position where God can do some work. And um, he says, uh, in your life, you've, been through tremendous pain and you've been tremendously lonely mm. and God positioned you with pain and loneliness to get you mm. in a position where because you've had no friends you had to become his friend mm. and uh, he didn't allow your friends and he put you through so much pain that the only way you could survive is become a close friend of his. Mm. And the reason why he's put you through the pain and caused your life to be so tremendous is he needed you to be so close that he could trust you mm. because he's got some important things for you to say and he can't trust everyone. Mm. And You've got to be so close to him that he can trust you because he's got an important message to share. And uh, so he apologizes for the pain and he apologizes for the loneliness, but he's preparing you to do something great and he needs to be able to trust you. Do you understand? It, it answered like years and years of why me and it explained why Matthew was to embrace the pain and embrace the loneliness and know that there's a purpose for it that he becomes so close to me and Jesus that I can trust him with an important message and you, you've seen uh, if you've followed these five books on video or read the first three volumes that are printed on Amazon. 
you've seen that we've addressed some really controversial things. We've we've said uh, that gays can go to uh, heaven. We've said uh, the sinner's prayer is a heresy. We've said there's a higher percentage of alpha religions in heaven than Christians. We've said up to 50% or more of Christians die and go to hell. Mm. Uh, we, we, we've said that people's understandings of the Bible are wrong. Mm. We've said that the church thinks it's free, but it's actually in Egypt and is in bondage to religion. We've said the church is full of blind leaders leading the blind and everyone's in a ditch and they mm -hmm. love being in that ditch and they've got no understanding that they're in a ditch. Mm -hmm. we, we've said that there's other paths to God than Jesus Christ. Who, who you know, Matthew and uh, Tulu are good friends and becoming really deep and trust trusted friends and Tulu has reinforced to Matthew that um, he couldn't possibly be a major speaker with tens of thousands of views on each video and thousands of readers of his books because he's so sensitive that he wouldn't be able to endure the attacks that would come at him. He he, he's so sensitive that he'd read the comments and he'd read the reviews and he, he'd just be constantly sad. And not only that, is uh, producing these books and producing these videos that are bringing forth this message take up so much of his time that he couldn't respond to 100 emails a day. He hasn't, he hasn't got the time to invest in an international ministry. So uh, that's uh, one reason. Matthew was uh, on the way to a church one day and he saw a real estate sign on the uh, driveway of this house, but uh, it, the real estate sign was out on the driveway because, uh, or next to the driveway, but the whole house was hidden by a hedge, by like an eight-foot hedge. So you couldn't see the house from the street. You could only see the roof of the house. And uh, Matthew studied advertising, studied headlines. That's why Matthew's uh, videos are uh, labelled so well. And Matthew's got some good titles for his books because the headline is the most powerful thing. And... Um, this real estate sign had a really good uh, headline and it said hidden treasure. And when Matthew read hidden treasure, he went up uh, to the real estate sign. He had 20 minutes to get to work. He's always early, so had time to go into this house. And he looked at the pictures and uh, the house was... Uh, made of exposed beams and wooden inside. And it, it was a brick house, but it, it had all exposed beam wood. And that's like uh, Matthew's favourite architecture. And it's like he was seeing uh, a vision of what he'd really love. And the um, the words hidden treasure really really resonated there was sort of the holy spirit was coming off the words and matthew turned around and started walking to uh to his washing up job he was just washing dishes matthew isn't qualified for anything good and um it was just a boring job and boring money and he'd get paid at the end of a fortnight he'd get paid at the end of the weekend, he'd spend all his money on a prostitute and have no money. Does this uh, thankless job, really hard job, and uh, 
not feeling important, and then at the end of the week, his addiction would drive him into the arms of a prostitute, and then he'd have no money for a week until he got paid again. So had this like uh, sad life. As he walked out from the sign, wondering what the Holy Spirit was trying to impress upon him with the word hidden treasure, Jesus said to him, that's who you are, Matthew. You're my hidden treasure. And uh, it meant a lot, but he didn't fully get the impact of it. And uh, he said, uh, Jesus continued, he said, when a, when a pirate, a, a pirate um, ambushes ships and takes over ships and steals their cargoes as they're bringing a cargo uh, to an important dock and... Um, the, the pirates collect a whole lot of treasure, all their best um, uh, wealth. And the pirate uh, sometimes, or in the legends, hides all the treasure in a cave or hides all, all, all the treasure on an island or some obscure place that no one's going to be walking past. And he draws a treasure map uh, for someone that he may be able to give the map to uh, where the hidden treasure is, but he hides the treasure. It's hidden. And mm -hmm. it's only in an emergency that um, the map is used for someone else to come and find the treasure. But a hidden treasure needs a map to get to it. It's, otherwise, it's never discovered. And that's the purpose of hiding it. And uh, a week later, he was in his mother's town uh, for Christmas and he was in a church and the pastor said to turn to a certain passage. And um, when Matthew looked up the passage on the other side of the Bible, uh, it had a, a teaching uh, and, and the title of the teaching uh, the, you know how Bibles have like a heading for what that passage is about. Um, the heading for the passage was hidden treasure, mm. and um, it was uh, the passage about the man who the parable that the man came across a treasure in a field and he purchased, he, he sold everything he owned purchase the field so that he could own the treasure mm. and uh, it was having a profound effect on Matthew that somehow Jesus was saying he'd give up everything and he'd abandon everything to possess Matthew and mm. um, Matthew's never been able to come to grips with being hidden like uh, and uh he's starting to realize that uh the reason that he's hidden is to give him time and we told him a year ago that or years ago that the reason he's never going to be successful is so that he could be my friend mm -hmm. and um he he wondered because we say some profound things and sometimes it takes years to understand a certain sentence like why does God need friends? Like there's, mm. there's millions of Christians in the world, you know, Heidi Baker would probably be a good friend and Andrew Womack would be a good friend and Joyce Meyer would be a good friend and Benny Hinn until he got so greedy for money probably was a good friend like why does god need friends and they're just four people he knows but there's many great ministers of god and servants of god that would be available to be friends of god surely god's got friends why does he need me and why does he deny my desire to be an international speaker and be popular and affecting tens of thousands of people why does he need me not to have my dream to be his friend. And, you know, um, 
I'm speaking hmm. all the time, you know. Birds will fly past your window in the morning and they'll chirp hmm. as they fly past. And that's me speaking. Your, your cat will uh, purr in your lap really content as you stroke it and that's me speaking i'll have a movie star i fall in love with with a wife and give up his job and give up everything to go on an adventure with her to take her uh, to a paradise that she always wanted to visit that's mm -hmm. me speaking matthew's got a book called 24 Ways to Hear God Speak and at least 24 different ways or 24 ways that he could think that I speak to. There may be 30 or 40, but Matthew listed 24. And I'm always speaking, but no one seems to be listening to me. Mm. It's like a radio signal is going out from a radio station and I'm broadcasting my message to the world there's no TV, there's no radios picking up the radio signal. I'm speaking, mm. I'm speaking, but no one's hearing the message. And mm. uh, I've got uh, emotions and thoughts and things that are hurting me. And you've heard uh, in the last week some of my emotions Why do I need a friend? Mm. What? Why did I need Moses to be my friend? Why did I come down and visit Mo Moses face to face? What? Why did? Why did uh, I love Moses so much that his sister mocked him and she got leprosy? Mm. Why why did my wrath pour out on his sister just for mocking him? How much was that love that she'd be infested with leprosy because she said something not so nice about Moses? Why did I need Moses? I, I needed Moses to set the captives free. Mm -hmm. And one time I... Uh, came down to earth uh, to uh, visit with a friend of Matthew's that was a prophet. Uh, Matthew seems to have friends for five minutes and they leave. Uh, one thing that really breaks Matthew's heart is um, mm. every time he gets a friend, they get close to him and then they leave. All, all his friends always leave and... Um, he had a friend that he was training in the prophetic and um, and helping to understand what a prophet is because he, he had a future of being a prophet. And uh, Matthew brought me down, sit on the top of the stairs of this building, and I sat on a the throne there, and uh, Mary Magdalene uh, sat on my left, uh, and Jesus sat on my right. And J Matthew saw like many years ago, like 20 years ago, what it is in heaven. He saw the throne room and the positions of power. And he didn't understand it, that what he was seeing was what the actual throne looks like. Mary Magdalene sitting on the left, Jesus sitting on the right, and me sitting in the middle. But it was just... Uh, me coming down as a personal favour to Matthew uh, to introduce myself to this young prophet. And Matthew opened the young prophet's eyes like uh, a prophet in the Bible did, Alicia did to his servants to see the horses and the army. Matthew opened his eyes because he knew he could. And he mm -hmm. showed... Uh, the young prophet, me sitting on this throne with a, a shining face like the sun, and he told the prophet to go up and speak to me and have a conversation because I've come to visit him and tell him a message. And The young prophet went there and was there for about 20 minutes and came back. 
he says I had to leave like the brightness on him was too much it was starting to give me a headache is that all right and he said yeah and he left he was walking uh, away and he looked back and I wasn't there anymore and Mary and Jesus weren't there anymore we disappeared and Matthew said as he was walking out of the park, are you back in heaven now? And I said, yes, yes, I am. And you'll be one like unto Moses. And, uh, you know, Jesus was, Moses uh, hoped that the, there would be one that come like him that would be raised up um, and... Uh, Matthew's starting to understand that he's had this uh, 57 years preparation mm. to to be someone to bring a message that bring people out of captivity and, mm. and bondage and religion. And um, some things need to be said. And uh, he needed to be put in this vice or, of pain and loneliness so uh, he'd just become my friend and he say anything uh, mm -hmm. i can i can get matthew to cuss on mm -hmm. video and have him type it in the book mm -hmm. just to break everyone's religion off them mm -hmm. you know what do people in the world say when they're angry and they raise their voice is it okay for me to use the english language and so I can uh, make him do anything because he can be trusted. I can trust him. And so uh, Matthew, I heard a teaching that a prophet is like sent out into the wilderness and there he's tested and tried and put through hardship and tests and trials to build his faith and build his courage and discipline him and teach him and build wisdom in. And then one day he comes in out of the wilderness and he's raised up and appointed into power. But it seems that Matthew's always going to be in the wilderness mm. and he's never going to come out of it. Mm. And, um, and so uh, I enjoy... Uh, Matthew's friendship uh, um, mm. over the past week I've uh, grown uh, even closer uh, to him and um, for a long time Matthew believed that he was nothing special like anyone can be like him anyone can have a relationship with him Everyone, anyone can have a strong prophetic gift like him. Anyone can interact with saints in heaven. Anyone can have his access where he can talk to any saint he likes in heaven. And for years he believed that anyone can do it. He had this humility that he'd love to teach people how to do it and mentor them into walking in everything that he walks into and it's only through the love that he has and respect that he has for Tulu that she was able to break through that dominant misthought of Matthew that he's just a normal guy and he can teach other people and she constantly tried to reinforce no no you're you're something else and, yeah, you, you can't impart this gift. Um, you were born for this. And um, that uh, she says often to him, you're really weird. And um, so uh, you, you see uh, Matthew's uh, psychiatrist used to ask him questions every three months. Is he eating? Is he sleeping? How's his moods? And she had standard questions and he'd sit there and answer questions and show her his latest books and mm -hmm. spend about 15 minutes together and leave. And he never lied down on the couch and he never shared all his pains and hurts and she never questioned him and 
talking for hours like therapists do uh, in the movies, but she never did that. And uh, But they say that part of being a therapist, an effective therapist, most of it is just listening and then asking questions about why they said that and what they mean by that and what do you think that means and uh, why would you ask that question and but the majority of therapy is just asking good questions and listening and that's what matthew is doing to me mm. it, it's Tolu and matthew are asking me questions and i'm speaking and Tulu will give commentary, then ask another question, why I said that and what does that mean? And the God of heaven, the creator of heaven and earth, the all-powerful one, Yahweh, mm. is receiving therapy mm. from an obese, mentally ill, unattractive loser who can't even dress right and uh, doesn't shower for a week to the point that he stinks so much he, he can't even bear it has to go home and have a shower wondered why the girl next to him got up and moved on the bus and he thought he smelled a homeless man he's looking around for the homeless man and realized the homeless man's smell was him and uh, so he went home that day and had a shower. But Matthew's at just like, he, he he's not the one that you would choose. Um, mm. The Apostle Paul said, not many noble are called, not many wise are called, but God chooses uh, the foolish people of the world, the, um, the losers of the world, um, to bring forth wisdom to confound the wise and, Matthew loved that verse and he's not going to look it up uh, in 1 Corinthians uh, to quote the verse for you um, but he, he really loved the world because it resonated uh, with mm. him so deeply it touched him so deeply like Paul's written about me this I'm not qualified uh, he, I, I'm not Matthew would say to himself I'm not qualified uh, I'm a loser I'm a rejected I'm a fool. People call me a fool all the time. I haven't got official training. I'm not handsome. I like I'm not attractive. Um, I, I'm not uh, important. Uh, I'm this total loser that Paul's talking about. And I wonder if he was talking about people like me because I seem to fit this really well. And uh, if... Uh, you read that description, it fits a stripper and a prostitute and a witch really well too. And um, one day the Holy Spirit gave uh, Matthew a revelation and I said the difference between the Holy Spirit giving you a revelation and you reading something in a book or seeing it on YouTube is when the Holy Spirit gives you a revelation that really powerfully hits you and changes you and the holy spirit gave a revelation that when paul was writing corinthians wherever he was matthew doesn't know whether he's in jail or where he wrote corinthians matthew doesn't know a lot about the bible or history and all those things you learn, learn in bible classes but wherever paul was being inspired to write corinthians 1 corinthians he was inspired to write that passage for Matthew. Mm -hmm. It certainly suits a lot of people and means that people have been blessed by that passage, but Paul wrote that passage to encourage Matthew mm -hmm. today. Yeah. That, that passage is written for Matthew above everyone else and in top of everyone else and it's written in matthew's bible because matthew was meant to resonate with that and find courage in that because matthew is this total loser 
who hasn't got any qualifications mm. to bring forth my voice to to change the world. And uh, if you listen to conversation at a dinner table playlist, you'll see that uh, and you'll hear in these messages, Matthew's forgetting what has been said, but Matthew's being mm. used to transform heaven and bring people who are in religion and religious bondage in heaven and breaking off mm. religious bondages of heaven. And there's a mass exodus out mm. of the lower realms of heaven into the higher realms of heaven. And people are getting set free and progressing. And Matthew's bringing a revival to heaven. He's seeing very little on earth and very little effect on earth, but he's become the Moses and, uh, you know, one thing about Moses uh, that many people skip over and when you're hungry for God and you, you're passionate about God above everything, you see all the little details that people miss. I got so angry mm. with the nation of Israel. I was going to wipe them all out. Moses pushed back and said, don't destroy your reputation. Mm. Don't tell the other nations you're impatient and you get angry. Don't destroy your reputation. Hey, don't destroy Israel. Blot my name out of the book of life, but spare Israel. Mm -hmm. So he said, number one, don't destroy your reputation because you've got this great reputation with what you did to Egypt but get over your anger and if you need to take your anger out on someone send me to hell mm -hmm. that's a pretty extraordinary person who would do that Jesus Jesus didn't even go to hell Jesus visited paradise and and preach uh, to to the people who died in the flood and brought them the gospel but Jesus didn't stay in hell and Jesus wasn't going to be uh, sent there forever. But Moses said, send me to mm. hell. And had such a friendship with God, had such a friendship with me that he turned mm. me around. Mm. He turned me around from wiping out Israel. I was going to build a new family. Like Moses was going to be the Adam and I was going to build a new family under Moses. Do you mm. know, I can get so angry that I can just wipe out things. Oh, wow. I can. I, I did it. Uh, the, the flood happened because I was angry with the evil, but the flood happened to destroy the Nephilim because the Nephilim were taking control. Satan was winning the war, so that flood had to happen. I can get so angry that I can just destroy things. Mm -hmm. Why did I destroy Sodom and Gomorrah? Yeah. One time Matthew heard Jesus say that Sydney is Sodom and New mm -hmm. York is Gomorrah. And um, yeah. Matthew had a vision that um, New York is going to receive a nuclear bomb and it's going to totally disappear. And uh, it's got a blast radius uh, that uh, certain people in the Illuminati don't live there. Um, but let's not talk about the enemy uh, in this one. Um, but um, Matthew met a preacher one time, remembers things. When you're hungry and you're a teacher, you remember things. There's a preacher called, uh, he doesn't remember the name, um, that walked around the whole world with a cross. And he's in the Guinness Book of Records of of the man who walked the furthest. And uh, he walked uh, with this cross. And he said mm -hmm. uh, there was a city in Europe and New York and Sydney were the most unwelcoming three cities in the world. Hmm. And uh, 
if you're unwelcoming to a man with a cross pretending to be Jesus and bringing Jesus' message, he was saying the most evil cities was, it, it's the city where they sell prostitutes in the windows um, mm. and, and uh, New York and Sydney. And uh, I called uh, Matthew out of, uh, uh, out of a nice country city and called him to live in Sodom. And here, here is where Lot lived in Sodom. And the world is becoming really wicked where I want to pour out my wrath. And the only thing holding back my wrath is Jesus holding my hand up. If my hand gets to the ground, you know, um, so he's become my friend and uh, but the mark of a good friend is they ask good questions and they listen and um, this is, uh, it's just so good. Uh, uh, Tulu and Matthew, you, you've done it together. I think Matthew wrote the questions for the first two books and uh, Tulu has taken over. And the quality of an interview comes from the questions. And uh, But seriously, you could ask me any question and uh, mm -hmm. I could talk about it. Um, but uh, Matthew had to become this uh, special person to bust open the religion in heaven. And um, the, the thing that makes me upset, pretty angry, in fact, is the church is just complacent. Mm. The church is an active, you know, the church... Matthew got this revelation one time. Uh, he likes to share sometimes revelations that he gets from the Holy Spirit. If you had an army that was a powerful army and your soldiers were disobeying the leadership, blatantly disobeying their superiors, would you go on a recruitment drive to expand your army to double mm. when no one in it, none of your soldiers no one in your leadership was obeying orders mm. why would you want to expand the size of your army when your army isn't even obeying mm. so the christian church think they're going to have a revival and an outpouring millions of people are going to be saved but they're not doing what we told them to do it mm. doesn't need to be one more sermon preached the world would be saved and changed and and, and liberated if matthew's 150 books got popular mm. the, the the christian church would be fully discipled just by reading those books and you know it, it would take many years for people to understand the books and many years for people to apply the books and that's he's got so many books now that a person would be hard pressed to read them in 18 months mm. let alone apply them and james has just this uh such a profound verse and Matthew's meditated that verse for so many years he understands it at such great depth be doers of the word not just hearers only deceiving yourself that they, they think uh Satan is the great deceiver but the, ch the church the body of Christ are the biggest deceivers they mm -hmm. deceive themselves by being able to quote scripture but not understand and obey scripture. I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. Every Everyone knows that scripture. 
So if Matthew was teaching on hardship and teaching on a healing or teaching on miraculous things, if he brought out that scripture, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, people would skip over the scripture. I know that scripture. But if you can do all things through Christ who strengthens you, why can't you stop sinning? Mm. If if you can do all things through Christ who strengthens me, why can't you heal everyone? Like everyone knows the verse, but no one has got the power out of the verse. No one no one is living the verse. That mm. verse in context, Paul was saying, I've been naked, I've I've been starving. I've been whipped, I've been abused, I've suffered with terror of thieves, I've been hunted down, my life has been really terrible. Then he said, I can do all things through Christ who strengthens me. And in in that context, most Christians can't mm -hmm. because they don't want any sort of pain. Paul went through so much and... Mm -hmm. uh, in the height of his ministry, he wrote that passage for Matthew. Isaiah was penning Isaiah 60, and he wrote, Arise and shine, for the light has come, and the glory of the Lord has risen over you. There will be darkness in the land, a deep, deep darkness, and I'll rise over you. Isaiah 60, verse 1. Matthew got a revelation of the Holy Spirit once, that Isaiah 60 was written by Isaiah about Matthew. Mm -hmm. oh. And uh, there, there's a real benefit uh, in having relationship uh, with the Holy Spirit and being close to Jesus mm. and close to me. But what does it profit a man if he gains the whole world and loses his soul? Everyone is seeking wealth and uh, popularity and likes and shares and followings. But what if you're the biggest YouTube channel in the world and you go to hell? Mm -hmm. And uh, some of these pastors and ministers have got such big followings. They've got the worldly trappings of success. But they're so stupid. They're mm -hmm. so blind. They're so false. They're so far from me. So many of them aren't aligned with the Holy Spirit enough to recognize when the Holy Spirit is speaking. We'll send a homeless person in just to greet a pastor and say something, mm -hmm. and they'll give the pastor a message from us. And the pastor won't recognize the Holy Spirit was speaking. You know, uh, Jesus taught about hirelings and false shepherds and people, wolves, and the, the, the heresy hunters are so busy looking for wolves and mm -hmm. false prophets and false teachers. And they point out all the supernatural speakers and all the Pentecostal ones, but they don't realize that nearly everyone is a false teacher teaching falsity. And they don't realize that they themselves are blind. Uh, so uh, I I most enjoy uh, speaking. I, I really um, I really like speaking through Matthew, and I care for uh, the person uh, listening to this video and wrapped uh, with the video and wondering what I'm saying and hoping that I don't stop speaking and this uh, thing saying you, you can, you got the floor. God, if you want to speak for another two hours, you, you're so interesting. I just want to hear what you got to say. And um, 
but I'm speaking to you if you're listening to this and this is making a lot of sense and you're finding things out about Matthew and he's jumping out all over scripture. Mm. I'm speaking for you. I have a lot of joy knowing that there's certain individuals that are going to read this uh, book series like Ron and the Apostle is watching this from South Africa and Victoria and they're listening to these videos and reading these books. <clears throat> You're very important. Matthew's hidden and he'll always be hidden. And you're very important to me that you're getting this message now. And I really encourage uh, you. I, I know our people's time is limited, but I, I really uh, encourage people to go to the very beginning of mentoring in the heavenlies and watch all the interviews we did with saints and the so much knowledge, there's so much wisdom in what they taught and they're all essentially teaching the same thing, obey Jesus, do what Jesus said. Matthew had a friend once uh, comment on his books and it's one of the best feedbacks he's had on his books. He said, uh, each of your books takes me to a different destination. Mm. And when I get to the destination, I look around and there's a sign pointing to Jesus. <laughs> it's, it's good feedback, isn't it? Wow. Yeah. Man. So, uh, you can be so infused with Jesus, so obedient to Jesus that you become like Jesus. Matthew uh, read, uh, wrote to a successful podcaster and he says, Matthew, you've just got a natural gift for seeing good things in people and mm. explaining them in great detail that brings tremendous encouragement to people. And he said that um, I don't often respond to the good things people say about me. I don't often respond uh, to the bad things people say about me. People have got their opinions and they're entitled to have their opinions. So I don't really get affected when people say nice things about me or give me nice feedback. But there's something about you, Matthew. When you encourage me, you really reach deep into me. You really lift me up. And I'm so thankful for you. I'm so thankful to have you in my life. That's not Matthew. That's Jesus. Mm. Matthew has become a living Jesus. Mm. And 1 John 2, 6, if you say you abide in uh, him, you must walk just as he walked. That verse, Matthew's been meditating for 20 years, pondering for 20 years. It means it's possible for us all to be Jesus to people. Mm. It, it's possible not just to know the teachings of Jesus, it's possible for people to meet Jesus. And if you get gifted in the gift of prophecy uh, and you become really led by the Spirit, it's like a person can meet you and think that you're the best person they've ever met in their life. You can have a power of effect. And... Uh, so it's really good to um it's really good to have someone who's on my level. Mm. It's really good to have a human being who feels like me, understands scripture like me, has the same frustrations as me, has the same anger as me as the same sadness of me, as the same mm. rejection of me, as the same misunderstanding as me, the same judgment as me. Mm. The church, by not obeying Jesus and not doing things the way Jesus said, they're essentially saying Jesus is a fool. Mm. 
and Jesus said all his words came directly from me. So when when people disobey Jesus, they're not only sinning, they're saying Jesus' way is foolish. I've got a better way. So people don't have to write a bad review on my Bible. They don't have to pen their opinion of that verse or their opinion of this. They make their opinions very clear when they do things the opposite way that we taught. You know, Matthew uh, had a bad comment come in on one of his videos and person was giving him theology that we're saved by faith, not by works, and you're making mm. it sound like it's all work and I've got to earn my way into heaven and mm. quoted different scriptures and stuff. Matthew said, thanks for your comment. Mm. In, in, instead of arguing back or saying something bad back. Mm. He produced another video and this guy watched the other video and the guy repented and said, you seem like such a sincere, humble, loving guy. And I really agree with this video. And I'm sorry for the snarky comment I wrote on your other video. Um, That's if you display love, 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 mm. love never fails. And the end of uh, that Corinthians verse, if people come against you and you just give them love, Paul wrote, love never fails. Hmm. It doesn't matter if they sin 490 times against you. If you keep on turning the other cheek, keep on forgiving, keep on praying for them, keep on blessing them, keep on loving them, you'll break through. Hmm. But it might be a real war. Yeah, it's not a war with the person. It's a war with the demon. That demon is so infested in them, so ground in them, keeps on barking against you, keeps on harassing you, keeps on doing things. People don't just choose to hurt you. Mm. Satan wants to hurt you. And just mm. people, some people are more yielded to Satan than other people like witches matthew couldn't understand about witches he, he he doesn't even know a witch it's just a witch he sees a pentagram on a person suddenly she's attacking him she doesn't even know him there's no reason they don't even know each other there's no reason for her to be the enemy but she's so sold out to the demonic mm. spirits in their life that the anointing of matthew just causes her to be an enemy. How bad is that? that when, when someone's really coming against you, it's just the demon in them that hates you. Why should he go and gossip? Do you know what he said about me? Do you know what he did about Oh, he does that to everyone. No, he doesn't do it to everyone. That demon does. He's hmm. just yielded to that demon. He's just a victim who's powerless and being totally controlled by an evil force. And sometimes they've done things and practiced things and done witchcraft and done things to give the demon more power in them and they want more power so they yield to the demon more and sacrifice to the demon and drink blood and get more powerful and get more prestige and more money Satan promises in the world, but he possesses their soul. What can you do for a person like that? Love never fails. You can just love them. Just keep on pouring out love and and uh, you'll win them over. And uh, Jesus, Jesus, my son, just had so much wisdom. And Matthew... <laughs> Matthew moves in a whole lot of wisdom, but it's really just the Holy Spirit moving in wisdom. Um, you know, it's not even Matthew speaking here. I'm using his voice, uh, and um, sometimes it switches between the Holy Spirit and Bethany with what I'm saying, the inspiration for what I'm saying. And, you know, true humility is thinking that... Um, 
that you're a bit of a dummy, that mm. all truth comes from the Holy Spirit. It's no longer I that liveth, but Christ that liveth in me. Paul had disappeared. Paul, mm. Paul, Paul wasn't even there anymore. You could try and talk to Paul and it was Jesus. Mm. When, when people met Paul, they met Jesus. You want to become a person that someone have a supernatural encounter with Jesus. They don't have to have a vision. They don't have to have a dream. They've just got to meet you. Hmm. And um, so I really love uh, speaking through Matthew. I really love the friendship we develop. And and I, if I have my way, I'm just going to be doing this series of books uh, for eternity. Oh, wow. Matthew's going to go from here to heaven and speak on my behalf for 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 years and he's constantly going to be learning and he's constantly going to be listening to other christian teachings and there's constantly being fed by the word of god and fed by other teachers and he'll constantly have stories to tell and illustrations in other people's lives to tell and he'll constantly be teaching and he's constantly bringing me glory. Do you know, b before this series, Tulu, you didn't even know me. No. You didn't understand me. Your idea of who I was is totally opposite to who I am. Absolutely. And 24 years in church taught you a lie. And, it's very smart. And, and, you, and you thought the way to be close to you, me and the way to make you happy was all these things you hated to do. Mm -hmm. You know, it's like the Catholics believe, you know, monks and stuff, Matthew's heard, that they used to whip themselves and torture themselves and hurt themselves to get close to us. But religion is just torturing yourself. Hmm. But it's taught by so many people, this is it. There's there's so many things wrong with the world and I wish you know, I I've almost I've almost given up on the Christian <clears throat> church or, you know. But what can you do? You know you know your tires might run out and there might be faulty tires. You need to replace your tires. But are you going to take your tyres off your car and stop your car from moving? Mm. You'll you'll drive around in your worn out tyres until you got the money to replace them. It's it's not wisdom, you know. Your faulty tyres can cause a crash, but uh, not many people who who are poor would park their car and not be able to drive to work because these tyres are unsafe. Mm. They'll just keep on driving with those badly worn out tyres until they catch a break and they get a bonus at work and they get the money to replace their tyres. What am I to do with the church? Mm. Am I just to give up on her? Because she's got faulty tyres? She's still moving the car along. There's, there's a... a, a high percentage of Christians that are really being beautiful to people. Mm. But there's a high percentage of Buddhists that are, are being more beautiful to people. Mm. The, the, the Christians that are nice to people and the witches that are nice to people, I don't want to tell you who's higher. The, hmm. the, Christian, the, the witches just hate Matthew because they're, they're, they're so close to the demonic that um, they just get distracted beam. And you know how you see in a movie 
where a fighter plane gets a lock on and when the lock goes on, this noise happens. When they press a missile, it wipes out the other plane. Uh, they've got to get it locked on and when it locks on, uh, the missile is locked onto its target and the missile will get the target. I don't know, you don't seem to be showing uh, Matthew that you've ever seen it on a film, but... Uh, um, but uh, a, a witch will sense Matthew's anointing and the demon will say, attack. And she's so submitted because she gets her power and her giftings from that demon, she'll just do what that demon tells her to do. You know? Matthew went into a, um, a post office and tried to pay with his card, tap, and it didn't work. And he tapped again, and it didn't work. And while he tapped the second time, he saw a pentagram on this girl. Uh, they're really emboldened witches that wear a pentagram that's telling people I'm a witch. And um, she said, here, give it to me. And she tapped, and it <laughs> worked. Then Matthew... Uh, uh, walked out and she followed him in the spirit. She started hmm. telling him how useless he is and how hopeless he is and what a jerk he is and he's never going to amount to anything. And Matthew said, I'm not going to talk to you. This angel's going to take you back. And um, the angel said, I'm not only taking you back, I'm giving you a migraine. The angel put uh, a sword through her head gave her a migraine. Mm -hmm. Matthew went to a coffee shop and the witch came into the coffee shop again and said, can you see all the warlocks around you? They're going to follow you home. They're going to kill you. And mm. it scared Matthew a bit. And um, Matthew wondered how he was going to get home without them following him. And the angel, we assigned like an uh, archangel just for protection for Matthew. Uh, in this season, he was getting a lot of attacks. The angel said, we'll hide you, Matthew. They won't really, don't get locked up in fear. So he went home and I didn't follow him. Two weeks later, he was 30 kilometres away from her. And she turned up and was attacking him. Right mm. again, and um, and in the coffee shop, she said, "I don't care about the migraine." Matthew hadn't said to her, "I'm giving you a migraine," but she had a migraine. She was still attacking. She said, "I don't care about it. these wallops going to follow you home and kill you," and um, thirty kilometers away, and she's attacking, and uh. The angel put a sword through her stomach and she's violently, she had to leave because she's violently ill and vomiting. And the angel said, you're always going to, if you ever turn up again, that's oh. going to happen to you. And, uh, but she didn't know any better. She just so given over. She must have had so much power. She's so emboldened that not many uh, witches actually wear a pentagram and let you know. It's like walking down the street with a with a um, T-shirt on that's got a pentagram on. They're the really powerful ones that really my way of the highway sort of girls. Um, the enemy just hates Matthew, but the sinners love him. The brokenhearted love him. And, uh, and I love him. And... He's just my broken, transparent, loser, bad dresser, lazy, unclean, unhygienic. Hasn't brushed his teeth for two years. Oh, Matthew. Did, did that surprise you? Oh, wow. Like you've heard everything about Matthew, but we knew that that was going to affect you. Man, Matthew, what kind of being are you? <laughs> and, you know, um, 
we we can end this any time, but while ever you want to listen to me, um, if if you could be everything you ever said gets rejected and disobeyed, that would make you feel pretty unhappy. If everything you sent your son to teach the church was not being listened to, not being understood, and the church weren't seeking out clarification of what the son said, it'd make you pretty upset. As You know, the Christian church, the modern Christian church, makes me think sending my son was a waste of time. Mm -hmm. They're so fanatical about the cross and Jesus' death on the cross and and how good that was. How good Jesus' life was is he did not sin. Mm -hmm. He was without sin. You try and do that. Well, the apostles did do that. John, Peter, Paul. They live sinless lives when they're baptized in the Holy Spirit. They become sinless. So they become like Jesus. And you're meant to be impressive like that. But everyone, ah, oh, thank you for your cross. I'm so pleased you died on the cross. People, people say that in prayer meetings to get claps. Hmm. But I tell them to go and give a free sandwich to that homeless person, go and buy a bagel and give it to that guy collecting money, and they refuse to do it. Hmm. So uh, Matthew's written all these teachings and people don't obey him. Matthew, people look at Matthew and reject him. People don't even see me. People, people don't even understand me. Like people who really love Jesus and really love me, you you love me despite not being able to understand me and thinking I was a jerk. But you tried to love me anyway. Right. Mm -hmm. You've got an abusive father, and because he's your father, you're trying to love him. Hmm. Can't, can't understand him. Don't really want to be close to him, but I'll worship him because that's what you do. Doing a whole lot of things you don't like doing, like praying and worshipping and fasting, all these religious things just to get close to a person that you don't even understand, you think is angry and judgmental. That's messed up. 24 years in church and you don't understand me. How, how, how do you think other religions are going to understand me? Hmm. How are they ever going to know if my church don't understand me? Hmm. Unless, how, how are people ever going to understand me unless they listen to mentoring in the heavenlies, what the saints say, and listen to this series of books, you know, what chance have people got to truly understand truth mm -hmm. and wisdom and my character unless they read this series of books? Mm -hmm. And how lucky are the people who get to read it? And I'm just getting excited. I'm just getting warmed up. You've got some good questions ahead. It's going to go deeper and deeper. Because the more you get to know me, the more you'll be bold and you'll ask some really bold questions. How do you deal with your anger, God? How, mm. how, do, you, how do you get a release on your anger? It's so pent up. You, you've got this really soft and encouraging and loving voice happening, but you can sense, you can sense in your spirit the rage behind me, the boiling anger, 
the wrath. Mm. How, how do you contain it? You know, you boil a pot and, and you boil it for too long, it'll boil over. It'll just go over the, you know. I need vessels to pour it out into. and I need people to steward my anger. Yeah. Um, a politician needs people to talk to and confide in to and get advice from and express. You know, there's, there's uh, prophets who uh, go on councils in heaven. They meet with other prophets and they decide what's going to happen in earth. Matthew's, Matthew's never been interested in taking part in one of those powerful prophetic councils. He's got, he, he's the opposite, you know, he's the opposite of the person who really wants power because he just wants mm -hmm. to drive taxis in heaven. Hey, hey, we're going to give him a job to preach in stadiums four nights a week or something, but he just wants to go out. He, this this week he's gone out, going out for lunch four times. He went out for lunch with another carer today and he's going out for lunch three other times, you know. You know, people, people if they want to send him money, can just uh, get restaurant vouchers and send them to him in the mail or whatever. People, mm -hmm. if you like uh, Matthew, just pick a 5XL shirt out, send it to him with a message, tell me the video when you're wearing my shirt. Mm -hmm. Yeah, Matthew wants to start a cashless society. He wants to start the mark of the beast. He wants to duplicate heaven that you can't do transactions on earth uh, unless you have the mark. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah, now you know I'm joking. Yeah, so uh, so in answer to, to the question, do you enjoy having a voice and speaking through Matthew? I enjoy having Matthew as a friend. I mm. enjoy sharing my heart just like anyone speaking to the therapist it's making me happier to have someone to listen having you listen and having five or ten people listening uh, to each of the books is making me happy and joyful mm -hmm. and uh and i really enjoy I, I i'd enjoy speaking through you too not just matthew i'd enjoy speaking to you i enjoy speaking to anyone but he was put in that vice mm. of suffering and loneliness to make him into the person who can carry my voice and i trust him i you mm. know what did the queen say well say it here the queen said if you've been faithful in marriage all your life and your wife dies, when you get to heaven, you'll be both young, you'll have newborn bodies, youthful bodies, and you'll have plenty of energy, and you'll be able to have sex. That's just, that's like everyone's dream come true. Like, you know, women's bodies and men's bodies start to shut down by the time they're 80, there's not much mm -hmm. sex happening, but you imagine being in love and being married 60 years and your sexual organs shutting down and it's just a friendship in the last 10 years and you get oh. to heaven, you're 50 years younger and uh, your wife does things that make you get an erection and you have sex. Imagine, imagine if that's just the life because that's the reward you get for being faithful with your wife. Why would I be approved? Why, why would I say there's no marriage in heaven? Mm. You know, now the Jewish custom was if the older brother died, the younger brother 
married his wife and looked after her. So if the seven uh, brothers who gave to her and provided for her, which one will be the husband in heaven? It's a difficult question. Is it the mm. original brother that died, that it was his wife, and all the other brothers took over, but it's actually his wife? Or did all the brothers, by providing for her for a few years, did they earn the right for her to be his? So it's a very almost impossible question for Jesus to answer. So his answer... His answer has confused people and they mm. made a doctrine out of it. Mm, that but makes sense. Why would the closest person in your life, your husband, that stayed faithfully with you through 50 years with all these temptations and all these trials, suddenly get to heaven and you can only be friends and you can't be <clears together? throat> What sort of... Like, why do they make me being such a crazy, unjust, unloving God that would do that to a couple? Yeah, you know, people have crazy ideas about heaven, you know. You, you grow up and the, the, the most loving thing you ever had was your dog. So mm. Christians teach that dogs haven't got spirits and when they die, they disappear and they don't go to heaven. So the mm. favourite thing in your life was your dog and popular Christian teaching teach that your dog hasn't got a spirit so it's not going to be in heaven. Mm. People are walking around broken hearted when their dog dies because they think they're never going to see their dog again and they grieve. Some people's animals are closer to them than humans. Like a dog doesn't know how to betray someone or how to be envious or jealous or anything unloving. All a dog knows is love and unconditional love. We, we've already shared that Matthew had a roommate that used to beat his dog and the next day the dog was jumping all over him. The dog mm. would yelp and be crying and be beaten with the stick and the next day he'd be all over that. Thing. Mm. The dogs are like that. Why would someone have a dog which is closer to them than any human? And then the dog dies and they believe they've been taught dogs don't have spirit mm. and they'll never see their dog again. That's unnecessary grieving. Mm. What if everyone knew when their pets died, they'd see them again in heaven? They could wait that. That would assage the grief and they'd say, well, can't wait to die. I'll see, uh, I'll see lucky again. Um, uh, why why ha have the Christian church in their effing religion taught couples that it, the reward for staying together all your life in a faithful marriage is when you get to heaven, there'll be no marriage and you'll just be friends and you won't be able to hold each other's hands and you won't be together forever again. Matthew only heard that that was a lie when his parents said, we live in the same house. Matthew didn't think you could see him. And his parents were talking to him saying, we're a couple, right? But... You know, people's interpretation of Scripture, wrong interpretation, uh, was the opposite of what Matthew's parents told him. What does he trust? Does he trust what his mum and dad are telling him? Say, so, well, that can't be true because that Scripture says you can't. I don't know what it means, Matthew. I just know me and, me and your dad sleep together in the same bed. And... Uh, there's been so many uh, things, that, so many truths that Matthew knows deeply mm. that he hasn't been reading his Bible, so he, he doesn't know Scripture support. Like, he knows he can click his hand and have an archangel here protecting him. He knows if 
the witches come, he can get a thousand angels just to start stabbing them all. He knows he can do that. But there isn't really a Bible book. Well, there's, there's not biblical support for commanding angels except Jesus saying he can command angels. But um, Matthew knows things hmm. that no one else knows. But he knows it spiritually. He knows it in his spirit. He, he just senses that that's true. Rebuking Satan is just a waste of time. Mm. Satan laughs, rebuking, get behind me, Satan. You know, if Satan's come up to you and got in your face, he's not going to get behind you just because you say it. Mm. Matthew walked in and uh, this guy came up to him one day and said, uh, I've got a whole lot of Christians against me. Matthew said, now you have it. You've been my friend. Take me around and show me these people and I'll get in their face. So he was taking him around. This guy was really evil, like Matthew found out later. But uh, Matthew was going around the city and this guy knew everyone where everyone was in the middle of like one o'clock in the morning. He's confronting each of these people, harassing him, saying, don't harass him anymore, or I'll get in your face. Matthew mm. walked into this restaurant. He saw this girl and without this woman, and without the friend even saying, he knew that this was one of the enemies. As he be began to speak to her, her eyes went as wide as two saucers, hmm. right? Both eyes went that big. And the eyes can't do that. So Matthew was seeing an apparition. Matthew was seeing like a vision, something impossible, but it was happening. It's very scary to be seen having someone. Matthew said, leave, and she would mm. leave. Then Michael come into Matthew, into his, his body. Michael said, leave, and she would leave. Jesus came into Matthew, and Jesus said, leave, and she wouldn't leave. What use is leave in Jesus' name when Jesus is speaking through Matthew and she was so wicked she wouldn't obey Jesus? Like, mm. where do you go from there? Like, leave in Jesus' name. Matthew, Matthew's had a pastor say leave in Jesus' name and Matthew's let off a string of curse words saying, I ain't going nowhere and you can go and... And Jesus, and who's he? He died on the cross 2,000 years ago. You're dealing with me now, so where's Jesus? How good is mm. that? And you just see him go white as a ghost. Like, hey, everything I knew to be right and spiritual warfare doesn't work. Well, Matthew saw it with this woman. She finally got so intimidated, she went out into the road, and um, she was running up the road and she she turned back and matthew was shouting at her and the father i was speaking through matthew and um jezebels can call people and jezebel spirit is like the holy spirit and everyone with witchcraft gathers and comes to her orders and the 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 witch running down the road wasn't giving the orders the head jezebel in heaven was doing so this buff guy came over when Matthew was shouting at her and telling her to leave. He came over to protect the the woman. And mm. Matthew said, you got no idea. And it, it clicked out of the father and said, excuse me, mate, you got no idea what you're entering into and how evil she is. I'm not going to hurt her. I'm not going to physically hurt her. Uh, but she needs to do what I'm telling her to do. Just stand there. If violence is going to happen, I'll give you full permission to take me up. So mm -hmm. Matthew come out of his authority stance and told the guy, I know that you're trying to protect her. She's not going to be hurt, but she needs to do. And she started coming back, right? So evil she was running, but then she started coming back. Matthew heard that heard this 
you put that foot on the ground and mm -hmm. I'm going to kill you with a heart attack. Mm -hmm. And she went to put it on the ground and then she picked it up and turned and ran up the road. Now, how evil is that? The mm -hmm. father is telling to go as she's coming back when God the, God the father is speaking through Matthew. Matthew's aware that Jesus is fully in his body and, and, and he can channel the father when Jesus is physically in him. The father's speaking, and she's still coming back and refusing. And he, she had to be threatened with a life. Well, she remained an enemy. This guy said, "If if you're my friend, she's your enemy." So, until Matthew had a falling out with him, uh, he mm. had to keep that. But two years later, Matthew walked into McDonald's, and she was there. Jesus said to him go up and say hello to her and have a talk. And um, said, you don't know who, he says, I know who she is. Have a look at who's sitting next to her and Jesus sitting next to her. Said, have a look and sit who's sitting on the other side. Mary Magdalene was sitting next to her. We're fine. Everything's fine. You'll be fine with us. Sit down and have a talk to her. He's talking to her and saying, why didn't you put your foot on the ground? I didn't want to die. But Jezebel, your spirit, your master was telling you to put your foot on the ground. Why didn't you do it? She said, I didn't want to die. I said, I didn't tell you God was speaking through me. Didn't you think it was just me? She said, it wasn't you. And I didn't want to die. I said, you're going to have to choose who you serve before you die because mm -hmm. at the moment you're doing everything Jezebel says to do and she's really nasty she says she re really is nasty she threatens me I have to do what she said and um, all of witchcraft is run by that spirit nearly all the police force nearly all the politicians it's it's the network it's the holy spirit of darkness and um that's why Matthew's heart went out because one of them put like a demonic attack on Matthew and took his heart out. That's why mm -hmm. Matthew can't go back to that church because she she's there, he'll he might need another operation and he, he'd be sick for the rest of his life. He, he wouldn't go back to the church unless we told him to go back. Um, but. Um, People have got no idea. Uh, Matthew understands one time this evil one brought a spiritual hunt on. Has he told you this story? No. If every evil person within miles was getting a message to come and kill Matthew. And he sensed that. We didn't tell him. He just sensed that this other witch, Jezebel, Christian witch, had called the hunt. He could sense that they're going to hunt him. He had three other young guys with him that he had like disciples. He was building his own little cult and he had three disciples. And this evil one that had been getting Matthew to confront all his friends was there and he was moaning. Matthew was saying, they're going to look for us. We've, we've got to, I've got to work out what we're doing. He started whimpering. Matthew said, shut up, stop whimpering. Mm. He knew angels could hide him, and that's how he walked away from all those warlocks that time, because angels just hid him like he disappeared, like Jesus disappeared. So he knew angels would, could hide them, but he didn't know if they could baffle the sound, and his friend was making a sound, and they could find him from the sound. Matthew said, shut up or I'll belt you, I'll knock you out. And um, his friends start whimpering more. And Matthew has got a bad fist um, and can't uh, punch anyone. And um, Matthew was stuck. He said, there's angels all around us. No one's going to get to us. You can be quiet. You wouldn't be quiet. You're so locked up with fear. So Jesus is the king of kings. 
Mm. He's already done his job. Mm. The next in command is the commander in uh, Jesus, commander in chief. But the next in command is the battle in the uh, the general in the fight. Well, the next commanding officer under Jesus is Michael the archangel. So Matthew went, Michael, come here. And he had a friend that had seen angels. One of the guys had seen angels. Um, uh, he he said uh, to that friend before this, he, he said to that friend, tell my whimpering friend here if there's angels all around us. He said, there's angels all around us. He said, that cloud in the sky isn't a cloud. It's a battalion of angels. I mm. said, John, is it okay? We're protected. No, it's still whimpering. So that wasn't working, but this uh, person could see in the spirit. Matthew couldn't see in the spirit at that time. So Matthew was pushing. He said, Michael, come here. And Michael dropped, and the guy that could see angels screamed at the top of his lungs, was screaming. And then he dropped to his knees, and he was shaking all over, thought his friend was whimpering, was making sound. This is almighty, like when someone's being stabbed with a sword or whatever, like a guttural scream. It was a terrifying scream. The guy was terrified. And I said, peace, mate. And and uh, Matthew said, peace, mate. I said, is there an angel in front of you called Michael the Archangel? He said, yeah, but you already know that. He said, is it safe? Is Michael saying it's safe for us to walk out of here? And, and he said, yes, it is. And um, and and so he said to the scream settled John down, convinced John that there really was an angel there. There really is angels there, you know, but he needed that guy to scream. Matthew was getting Michael to come and do something, whatever he needs to do. But Matthew had run out of options. Now, where's the Bible in this sort of? spiritual warfare you've mm -hmm. been reading the bible all your life what verse in the bible works for this right it's relationship Matthew mm -hmm. had relationship with michael yes. he'd met michael 30 times uh he'd met jesus hundreds of times it wasn't the bible it was relationship moses mm -hmm. didn't have the bible Moses mm. was a friend of God. He didn't have the Bible. He wrote the Bible. Abraham didn't have a Bible and did everything he did without a Bible. The, mm. the, the Christians place so much emphasis on the Bible and use their interpretations of the Bible to argue with each other and enforce and control and do all sorts of evil things and use Bible verses to do it. But it really comes down to Abraham had relationship, Moses had relationship, and the Bible is meant to lead you into relationship. And um, so Matthew has seen and done things um, mm. uh, that uh, he hasn't got Bible verses to. But he trusts his instincts. He trusts the vision. When he sees a vision, sees something happen, he trusts that that's authentic and he can't understand it, but he knows he saw it. But like you're not meant to, as Bible verse said, no one can see God and live. Well, Matthew's seen God mm -hmm. and lived and saw God's face. Like uh, God is a spirit and, uh, and there's a verse that says that God is basically invisible and and yet Matthew's seen me face mm. to face and he's seen a tear running down my eyes. So he, he knows that I can live and manifest in the body because he's seen it. So that's mm. opposite to the scripture, what the scripture says. One says you can't see God and live and the other one says he's an invisible spirit. But whatever they're meant to mean they don't mean that because Matthew's testimony is he's seen me, seen my face and lived and he's seen my face and I wasn't invisible. I was a real body in a real human body. So there's realms he walks in that 
disagree with the accepted practice of accepted knowledge of scripture when is men ever going to understand unless they're intimate with the holy spirit unless they grow close unless they live a supernatural life they're never going to understand the bible the bible has got so many depths to it it's so profound and it can be contradictory you can use the bible to enforce all that religion on you and you you can use the bible to say you don't have to do anything you're saved you're loved you don't have to do any works once you're saved you're always saved you can continue sinning all your life and be an absolute jerk and go to heaven and there's a camp that can use the bible to say that there's a camp that says unless you dot cross all your t's and dot all your i's and do all this religion you're not going to go to heaven you're going to be sinless and the bible supports both views and the truth is in the tension in the middle hmm. the, the right wing of politics isn't right the left wing isn't right and all the righties think the lefties are controlled by satan satan controls both sides but the truth is in the middle of both of them there's polarities there's a north pole there's a south pole and truth is found in two places and the truth of the truth the combination of both sides is really the truth and uh, so the church think they can understand me through the bible but the bible's just meant to be a pathway to relationship Jesus only ever quoted the Bible when he was going to give an update or he was going to say the opposite to what that verse said. Christians don't believe a book unless it's full of scripture. But false teachers use a lot of scripture to teach something that's false. Hypergrace teaches a false doctrine and supports it with scripture. Legalism teaches a false doctrine and teaches it with scripture. That's why Matthew couldn't read the scriptures for 20 years because mm -hmm. teachers had abused him and taught him error and used the Bible to teach him. So Matthew was angry with the Bible. Mm -hmm. And he's just starting to get into it. It's sort of uh, making him happy. So there's, I could talk all night, but um, have you got any feedback? Anna, you've said so many things. I hope I remember them all, but I'm going to summarize what I'm taking away from this conversation. It's number one, that the best calling man can ever have over their life is to be your friend. It's not to have a big platform. It's not to be the greatest um, man of God as we all know what we think prosperity is. And I do, or serving God is all about, or being the first in the kingdom of God is not actually what you think is the first. And I know Matthew has always desired to have this big platform to be able to impact a lot of people. But I believe the desire does not come because he wants to be popular. It comes from the tenets of he just wants people to know more about the gospel of Christ, what this is all about, because he knows a lot of people are being taught the mistruth, just like myself, that I do have a lot of misconceptions about the kingdom of God. And every time we have the dinner table conversations, like I'm so surprised with the things I hear. What Queen said, oh my God, I could never have imagined that in heaven. And that's because of so many things that, that I've heard about heaven. Maybe because of some of the things that was referenced as well in the book of Revelation, people just make assumption about this is what heaven is. When you get to heaven, you don't marry, you you just as live separately, you don't husband and wife don't live together, and you just become a new being. All of the things that you've done is just forgotten, and you just become this new person who is just worshiping God, and all of those things are not true. So for me, what I've desired mostly now, since I met Matthew, I never knew that that was Ben calling. I never knew that he was your friend, but I've been able to understand better through Matthew. 
that the friendship, friendship with God, understanding God, knowing the heart of God, sharing in his suffering is the best thing that a man could ever have lived in their life. And that is who Matthew is. And that is what I'm learning from him. Even though, like, Matthew has really, really surprised me in the sense that I wouldn't have, or maybe it's God, God, the way you've lived your life through Matthew, you've made, you've been, Matthew has been, the, your voice has been able to represent you here. It's something that I wouldn't have thought of because I would just be thinking, oh, Matthew, Matthew has got all of these things that he struggles with in his life. Why would God use him? That is what a lot of Christians will think, that people that God uses are the ones that suit up. They are the ones that got their life all together. They are the disciplined ones. There's so many assumptions that we do have of who, of who a man needs to be for us to be able to acknowledge that they are actually serving you and for us to respect them. And Matthew has shattered all of my assumptions about who you use. And it has really helped me to understand the fourth will be the last and the last will be the fourth. Because so many times we do recite a lot of Bible verses and we don't even know what they mean. But meeting Matthew and then the emphasis on Matthew is the, is the Moses of this generation. That would have been the last thing I would have ever thought of. Like Matthew is such a great man of God and is living a very simplicity life that just makes people just overlook him. I'm, I'm sure when he goes out, people just walk past him without even recognizing that this is a friend of God. This is someone like Moses to God. And Father, I, I, I'm just really grateful for the opportunity that you've given me to first of all know Ben, who, who is your friend, who is a prophet as well, he, he didn't prophet as well, then Matthew. That has really helped me to understand what it is to serve you. And it, it just really brought me out of religion because just like you said several times, Father, that for 24 years, I was just being religious. I did not even know who you were, even though I really loved you. I really wanted to have an intimate relationship with you. I really wanted to please you, but I never knew who you were. And it just reminds me of, I was reading Sadhu's book yesterday night and I was reading that part to you, uh, um, Matthew. I, I might not remember I but, but what he was trying to express is a lot of people know about God, but they don't know God. And he used the illustration of a blind person that though a blind person might know about the color blue, color yellow, but because it's never seen, it can never see because it's blind. There's no way he's going to understand how those colors looks like and what the differentiation is, even though he knows about them. And he was able to illustrate that that is who a lot of Christians are. A lot of Christians have heard about God, but they don't know who God is. And until their eyes is open, because they are all blind. And I absolutely agree with that, that I was blind. I never knew who God was. I thought I knew who God was. I thought God just, was the God. Just, just stop for a sec. I just got to talk. Okay. Okay, Matthew. Uh, you could keep on talking, but I want to hear it. Okay. I'll, I'll wait for you, Matthew. Um. I'm back. Oh, that was quick, Matthew. Yeah. So, what was I saying? Yes. That. So, you was trying to illustrate. You were just trying to tell us the state of the church. That even though Sadhu never went to a church, he only went to church a few times, and he he saw that no, the church is not for me. He was able to get it. He was able to understand it. That this is not where I'm supposed to be. I'm going to develop my own personal relationship and be a friend of God. So he understands you really well that each time I have the opportunity of reading his book again, I'm always so amazed because a lot of the things that is taught in that book is what we are discussing in here. 
And the fact that he was able to describe that a lot of us, we are blind and we just need that our eyes needs to be open. And when our eyes is open, we will be able to understand who God is, what it is to follow Christ, what it is to be a Christian. And unfortunately, majority of the Christians think they know who, who you are. It's just like what Matthew posted. Matthew posts a lot of things on Facebook that sometimes it's so difficult to catch up with all of them. But some, Matthew posted something like an hour ago, said, God is depressed with the state of the church. They seems to think that it is okay to worship him to manifest his presence and then leave church and disobey him all the rest of the week. That is what we do as Christians. We go to church, but for some reason, we always think by the fact that we're going to church, we are serving you. But serving you is not related to being in the church. There's no correlation. But that is what we've taught all year. Like, for instance, I've only been to church once this year. This is the month of September. I can't believe it. And I've not missed church an inch. And I don't feel I've missed anything. Because it's like I am having to relearn what it is to be a Christian. And all I've been taught for so many years is not the right thing. And all I've believed but you have Matthew who has been your voice. And one of the things that has really helped Matthew is that for majority of your life, you've not been indoctrinated into what church is. And even though you wanted to go to the Bible college and everything, Jesus stopped you from going because he knew probably you're going to become a jerk like who a lot of Christians are today. And God was able to take you away from that direction and say, no, I just want to mentor you. I want to coach you myself. I want you to be who I want you to represent to people. And I'm sure when majority of the Christians see Matthew, they'll probably focus on all of the addictions that he's experienced and they will point fingers at him that there is no way Jesus will be using Matthew. There is no way Jesus can be the person that is going to set everyone free. You have to really be I wouldn't use the word fool, but you have to be crazy to believe who Matthew is, to believe all of the things that Matthew says. And I so much believe everything. Even when he says he's been in delusion, I believe it. I believe whatever comes out of his mouth because I see him as a prophet of God. And it has been able to help me to embrace your father the more because I've now seen the real you. I've seen you as a loving father and that you do not want me to have all of these expectations that I've put all over my life for so many years that I need to do this, I need to do that. And seeing that God just loves me for who I am and identifying my identity in Christ, that I am loved, I am righteous, I am holy, I am blameless. These are the things I never believed that that could be equated to me. And if Matthew can see himself in that way, then I see myself in that way. And it's been able to build my confidence in you. And just like what you said, Father, I'm growing in boldness that it will get to a time I will be able to ask some questions, which I can ask now. It's just like when we started the dinner table conversation, there were so many questions I wanted to ask, but I felt that was not the platform for me to ask. I would rather prefer to ask that question privately. But I'm getting to that stage, I'm getting to that level of transparency, that level of openness, that I can just be myself in those conversations. So it's a journey. And through all of these conversations, I am learning further. And it's like you've taken me under your arms as your daughter and just say, yeah, totally, just let me teach you what it is to know me. And you did say you, you, you could speak through me. I don't have the boldness yet that could be your voice, Father. But who knows what, what lies ahead of the future? I know Matthew has been personally groomed for this, but I will just continue to love you and continue to serve you and continue to follow your steps. And I will leave the future. I will leave that into the hands of God. I will stop saying, no, I can't I can carry the voice of God because it looks so scary to me, Father. But I will just believe in you. It's a, it's a journey for me. And I'm still right at the beginning of that journey. I still have so many years ahead of me. So thank you, Father, for all of these things that you, you've been expressing yourself. It has really 
really helped me so much. It has really set me free. That is all I can say. And it has really helped me to enjoy serving you as against, I, I never enjoyed Christianity before. And because I didn't enjoy, it was so difficult for me to preach the gospel because I always ask myself, why do I need to preach a gospel that I don't really feel joyful within that? And that is why a lot of books are read about people living faith. And I understand that they never knew you. They only knew about you because if they knew you, there was no way they were going to walk out because they were going to see that you are actually a loving God and you are not that God that they've been made to believe a, God, a judgmental God, a God that doesn't like uh, gay, that doesn't like this person. No, that is not who you are. You love everyone and you are the father of every one of us, whether we are Christian or no Christian, it doesn't really matter. So thank you, Father, and I'm so grateful for what you said today and grateful for your life as well, Matthew. Did you enjoy today? Absolutely. I never knew that this question would bring anything useful out. I thought it was just going to be a simple one. And then you keep talking and talking. It just shows how much you love Matthew. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you uh, for working on this book and assisting you bring so much to this book and sometimes when I, I use Matthew to go in a different direction than your desire <laughs> for the answer of the question you comment on what my say and my opinion and then you bring the answer that you want uh, for the people uh, too and so we're we're being used to co-teach the people and um, you bring uh, really interesting questions and I look forward to more questions and I look forward to spending uh, nearly every night with you uh, in Matthew's time and um, your real uh, joy uh, to, to heaven and you're having a remarkable effect and uh, you really are a fool, um, you know, the wise became fools to confound the wise. Um, you, you, uh, the wisdom of God is foolishness to men. Um, uh, and uh, so if they're calling you a fool, uh, you're on the right track. Yeah. Thank you. So if you listen to this video, to this part, uh, you know, please like the video or comment on the video or share the video if you like what's being said. Uh, perhaps you want to go back uh, to the playlist okay. and read, okay. uh, listen uh, to uh, the playlist, God's Last Day's Message to His Children. Uh, if uh, you like the channel, subscribe to the channel. Um, have a wonderful day. Uh, I want to personally thank you for listening to the whole video. God bless.